So the purpose of this research project came about a while ago when I was working through a map project. The map project required me to talk about a specific area here in the city of Saskatoon. As I was working through the project, I postulated on the idea that how this area might have looked like when there was no colonial residential exploration and exploitation. And being that the area was close by to Wanaskewin, which is in the north end of the city, <clears throat> I was able to just come up with some rough ideas in terms of people movement, animal movement, what those things meant to people and how it is that they were interrelated. And that interrelation obviously brought me to the relationship between the buffalo and the First Peoples. So that kind of began to evolve into an idea of that interrelatedness. And I focused in various ways and possibilities, but what I ended up focusing on was the in interrelation between the artistic practice of First Peoples and the buffalo. And furthermore, that idea developed or develops through this uh, inquiry project into other artistic practices of, the, of First Peoples and how it is that they projected over time and can be said to project even into today's times. So this basic inquiry project idea of that interrelatedness developed into something that I found rather interesting because I found a lot of interesting things along the way. So with that said, I can begin by saying that the interrelationship between the Buffalo and First Peoples has been fairly long-standing, but the relationship between First Peoples and art is even longer. As we know, such as with the caves of uh, Lascaux and France, First Peoples have been doing art for millennia and as long as there's been people, actually. So looking at things like animal hides, and specifically buffalo hides, we can see that they've been used in multiple ways, as clothing, shelter, safety. And I'll talk here about a couple of different things that have been they've been used for. Over time, we can see, such as this image here, first people have used hides in what is known as calendric ways, which means they mark calendar years with one image uh, that represents an, a very important event that happened during that year. <clears throat> and they were marked from one snowfall to the next. And these images were recorded by an artist, but they were done under the supervision or direction of a specific group of um, elders. And I found that very interesting because a lot of the time we, we rely on ideas of oral narrative, but then we can also look at images such as this one and see that First Peoples also had a kind of written record, even if it is just images. Indigenous people also used hides to record other events, such as what is shown here, which is generally known as heraldic expression, which means uh, any conquest or anything that was grandiose in terms of a tribe or a group was recorded as an image, a pictorial image. Now we'll talk more about pictorial images and their value within indigenous societies as we move on. But just to make the note, usually they included animals, people, uh, the passage of time, which is very important, and some form of narrative. Now, artistically, indigenous peoples, as, as it is shown here, have been doing art for millennia, as I've mentioned before. In this image here, we can see rock art or petroglyphs on uh, the side of mountains in Santa Fe, as well as other indigenous arts here that is actually with color. Now, speaking of indigenous people and their interrelationship with animals and specifically the buffalo. We can see here in this image, which has uh, multiple images in various scales, uh, we can see images of people with shields. Now these images are about anywhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred years and they're from various places, but they all seem to depict the same thing, which is shields. Now back, back then, if you will, uh, shields were used for warfare and they were made from the buffalo hide, specifically from the front chest area, which is the toughest part of the, of the animal. And it would range anywhere between half an inch to an inch in thickness. And this was used to make the shield for warfare. Now the interesting thing about shields is that over time, they retained the artistic expression that we see, but their significance became more valued as much more so than just an art artifact of war to that of an artifact of life and more than that a very spiritual meaning now the shields themselves were personal in nature meaning that they were attained or achieved 
through <clears throat> maturing of the person, becoming a warrior per se, and being able to go on a, on a quest or have a dream quest, have that image of the shield given to them by the spirits. Now, as we see here, this one has the four directions painted on it and two dragonflies. Now, the dragonfly was an animal that spoke of speed and stealth and therefore the shield gave that meaning and that acquisition of personality to the person as well that owned it. Uh, it is interesting to note that shields also were known to have prophetic abilities and I read in one situation a party of about four men that were scouting their area came across a group of about nine uh, enemies if you will and the leader had his shield and according to him the shield told him that they would go to battle they'd be triumphant but he wouldn't come back and he told this to his men and they went to battle anyways and of course they they defeated the other people encroaching on their land but he didn't make it and i found that really interesting because there's that high level of sacredness to uh, these items and we can see that each one was different and at times they also uh, had more than one layer and as the person matured the layers were added or specific artifacts were added now this one here is really interesting it belonged to a chief named Arab Posh if I'm not mistaken with the pronunciation and one can see feathers and bones and the head of a bird and other things I think there's a foot of a rabbit and each one gave the person specific abilities but it also were uh, depictions of specific battles and things like that that hit, had made this person that had granted this person safety and all these different things now what interested me more and what kind of took me into a different direction with this project was that that a lot of these shields belong to one person and one person only so the actual shields that are surviving today that do go back to an original shield uh, owner were either stolen or taken by force because when somebody died they were buried with their shield so when we begin to see things like european movement into the prairies we begin to see this idea of the art evolve into something else and so we move into the second part of this project as to how it is that the art and the narrative of the art changed so what ends up happening is that as indigenous peoples come into contact with the Europeans, they begin to inherit different things, such as pots and pans and all these different things. But they also encounter the idea of art on paper. And so a different method of expressing their ideas uh, is born, which is called ledger art. Now, ledger art continues with the idea of shield because shields are usually represented in ledger art but they create furthermore a narrative as to how it is that that shield protected the man through a specific battle encounter or uh, how they they allowed them to overcome and since they had more of a broader canvas than just a shield they started expressing and in, in, in pictographs other things such as daily life but also what ends up happening is that as more and more contact with Europeans happens, they also begin to lose the right to the land and they begin to uh, be, be part of the um, reservation system. So the, the essence of the art is there, but it begins to change dramatically, as we shall see. So one of the interesting things about ledger art is that it depicts the passage of time and there is a narrative so that narrative usually says things like such as in this one a soldier going into battle and you can see arrows passing by so that most likely depicts a person that is that has some kind of a backup and the arrows are going towards him which means they're coming from behind they can also depict encounters with other indigenous peoples and furthermore they can also depict battles with uh, soldiers battles with each other daily life as we can see in this one uh, footsteps we can see an animal that is uh, lingering above the person 
and so that is his spirit animal that spirit animal goes with him wherever he goes and now this artist happens to be <coughs> uh, fairly prolific he did a lot of his art in while in reservation already so he does a little bit more of a mundane th uh, theme if you will but he always has his uh, spirit animal which is a uh, beaver now the one piece that i came across which i found really interesting is this one which depicts a battle now they don't know who the artist is but they know that what the narrative behind of it is so we can see on the right several horses that are mounted with um, warriors we see many many footsteps which shows that there were many of them that went to fight and we can also see a set of hoofs hoofsteps kind of going in a circle behind the rider which means that he was kind of going around getting the troops ready and then off he goes leading them into battle now the following one is was done while in um, preservation so it's a little bit more expressive but still you can see the arrows coming from one side you can see the animal prints as they're moving through the land and we can see the other people with guns shooting at them so it's a bit of a massacre if you will now as i mentioned this type of art happened very quickly and it lasted very for a very short period of time because it was just during that time of encounter between being free people and being moved into reservations so what ends up happening is that the art itself lasts only about 70 years so as people encountered more and more European settlers, their way of life changed dramatically and, and as such, their way of expressing the art changed as well. And over time, as they moved into the reservation system, they were encouraged to move away from just expressing art as an artistic expression and start making art as a way of living. And they were being forced to make art and sell it for $2 a piece to the passing soldiers or the passing settlers that came through the forts and the various locations. So we begin to have a different type of art where all the symbols, symbolisms, and expression that were found in the shields move into the decorative section of the art practice. So we're no longer dealing with the animal and the animal hide, but a lot of the symbolism has been retained and has been transferred into the art we could call it a professional art practice, if you will, because some of them were very skilled artists. And therefore, over time, the art begins to acquire more and more European traces. Figures become much more three-dimensional, and the decorative aspect of it becomes less symbolic and much more artistic. Therefore, we can see that they're producing art for a market rather than for that spiritual aspect that began with the shields. So this is how this inquiry project came to a conclusion when I, as I began to put all these different ideas together, like the original idea was thinking about the interrelationship between the animal and the person, and then they added the uses of spirituality onto the animal, where the shields, when they were large, they became smaller and they became symbols of protection. And over time, those symbols were translated onto paper. And then over time and through the contact with the Europeans, the art itself, evolved as a means of survival and this last image here shows the four directions riders the shields and the stars which is cosmology and i'd like to leave it there